Okay, so by now we all know that lentils are one of the best foods you can eat, both for your health and for the planet. But for some reason, there are a lot of folks out there who just don't care for them. And so in today's video, I'm sharing four incredible recipes that are guaranteed to make you fall in love with lentils. And we're gonna get started with a super fun and crunchy Indian inspired lentil snack. It's kind of like Chex Mix, if Chex Mix was grain free and made in Mumbai. It's an unbelievable topping for so many dishes, but addictive enough that you can just eat it by itself as a snack. Grab a medium saucepan of water and bring it to a boil. Season it with some salt and add in your lentils. I'm using green lentils, but brown lentils also work here. Our lentils are going to simmer uncovered for about 10 minutes or until they're just cooked through and still have some bite to them. You definitely don't want them to be soft. Let those hang out and dry off for a few minutes. We can use that time to prep the other ingredients. Measure out three quarters cup of nuts. I'm using almonds and cashews today and just give them a chop. Add them to a bowl alongside the other ingredients. Pepitas, sesame seeds, coconut flakes, kosher salt, several cracks of black pepper, cumin, coriander, Indian red chili powder, turmeric, and cinnamon. And just a quarter teaspoon of sugar to balance everything out. If you don't have all of these ingredients, do not worry. This is a forgiving recipe and it's easy to make changes or omit certain ingredients. Add the cooked lentils to a rimmed baking sheet and toss them with a tablespoon of olive oil as well as some salt and pepper to season. Spread them out so there's no overlap. That way they get nice and crispy. Pop the sheet pan in the oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 205 Celsius and let the lentils roast for 12 minutes. We can use this time to finish off the nut and seed mix by adding a tablespoon of oil to coat. After 12 minutes in the oven, remove the lentils, add the nut and seed mix to the pan, toss everything to combine, and then you're gonna bake everything together for about three minutes. If the coconut flakes are a deep golden brown, you are done, but if not, bake for another minute or two. Sprinkle the crunchy mix with a few pinches of flaky sea salt and let it cool down. You can store this in an airtight container in the fridge for about three weeks, though it never lasts that long in my house. This stuff is so good. It's like a savory Indian popcorn meets granola. You can use it as a savory topper for lots of different foods, including the next recipe I'm gonna show you. And that recipe is dal palak, which is essentially an Indian spinach dal. This is one of my favorite dishes from the past year, and there are essentially two components, the dal and the tarka. The dal itself could not be simpler. It has basically just three ingredients. First, lentils. Red or yellow split lentils work great here. You wanna rinse them thoroughly until the water runs clear, then add to a medium saucepan and cover with water. Bring to a boil and use a metal spoon to skim off any foam, then reduce to a simmer. And you'll add in your second ingredient, which is turmeric. This is gonna give the lentils a lovely golden color. And we'll simmer the lentils for 20 to 30 minutes. In the meantime, we'll prep our tarka, which is the tempered spiced oil. This is a hallmark technique of Indian cooking, and it is where all the flavor comes in. Like so many recipes, we're starting off with the holy quaternity of Indian cooking. Onion, garlic, ginger, and chili peppers. We don't want any big chunks in the tarka, so we'll finely dice the onion. Once it's cut in half, make a series of vertical slices into the onion, starting from one side, but not cutting all the way through the root. This helps keep the onion together. Next, carefully make a few horizontal cuts, starting at the bottom and working your way up. Now turn the onion slightly and begin slicing. You'll see the onion naturally separating into a fine dice as you go. We'll thinly slice several cloves of garlic. And for our knob of ginger, you wanna peel it with a spoon first, then slice it thinly. Lay those slices on top of each other and then you can slice those into little matchsticks. For my green chili, I've got a serrano pepper. You could also use a jalapeno pepper. You just wanna finely chop that up. If you've got baby mouth, go ahead and omit this. Or if you want a little bit of heat, go ahead and remove the white membranes before you start chopping. I'm also including another form of chili peppers. These are dried red chili peppers. No need to chop them, just tear them in half. And again, adjust this recipe to your spice tolerance. I was literally raised by a man who has actually said the words, Nothing is spicy for me. So I might have a higher spice tolerance than you. All right, let's talk curry leaves. These are fresh curry leaves, which you can find at Indian grocery stores. If you can't find them, you can also order dried curry leaves online and you can make this recipe without either option. But if you can get them, they are so worth seeking out. Back to our dal. It's been about 20 minutes and the lentils are quite soft. So we'll help them along by vigorously whisking until they're almost somewhat pureed. This should take about one minute. 
Simmer for a few more minutes until it thickens and the lentils are creamy and mashed. You'll season with a generous amount of kosher salt and squeeze in some lemon juice. Then set this to your lowest heat and keep warm while you cook the tarka. Heat a frying pan over medium high heat with some coconut oil. And once it's shimmering, you'll add some mustard seeds and cumin seeds. You can get both of these at any Indian grocery store or online. I'll add details in the description box for the video. The mustard seeds will start popping, and when they do, it's time to add in the onion with a pinch of salt. Lower the heat to medium so nothing burns, and stir frequently until the onions are nicely golden brown. Then you'll add in the garlic, ginger, and green chili, and keep stirring for about a minute. It's time for the dried chilies. I'm also adding a pinch of asafoetida or hing because I love the flavor and fresh curry leaves. These need just 30 seconds and you wanna basically stir the entire time so they don't burn. In go several handfuls of baby spinach plus a few pinches of salt. You may need to add the spinach in batches depending on the size of your pan. Keep stirring it until the spinach wilts and then take it off the heat. Add the spinach targa on top of the dal and stir it in. This is unreasonably delicious for how simple it is. You are going to love this doll. Oh, and I forgot my topping. Mm, 10 out of 10, phenomenal. For our next dish, we're making a lentil bolognese. This is one of the most popular recipes on my blog and for good reason. It uses simple ingredients, it's delicious, it's hearty, and the bolognese sauce freezes great. We're using red lentils as kind of the meat substitute, but I promise this doesn't just taste like lentil pasta. The first step is to soak the lentils in water for 30 minutes. I'll explain why in a bit. In the meantime, we'll finally dice one large onion and mince four cloves of garlic. Now grab a quarter cup of walnuts and chop those as finely as you can, basically until they're crushed. Walnuts are naturally rich in umami and they'll give our bolognese a little body, so they play a big role in this recipe, both flavor and texture wise. There's not that much more in the way of prep, so now it's time to heat up a deep saute pan or a Dutch oven over medium high heat. Get some olive oil in there and once it's shimmering, add your onions. Make sure to stir frequently and deglaze with a splash of water as you go. It should take about 10 minutes for them to look like this. Now add in the garlic along with a couple dried herbs, a teaspoon of dried oregano, and a teaspoon of dried thyme, plus some kosher salt and a few grinds of pepper. If you happen to have fresh oregano or thyme on hand, definitely use those, about a tablespoon each. After 60 to 90 seconds, we'll squeeze in an entire tube of tomato paste. When you cook tomato paste down like this for a few minutes, you get so much natural savoriness, a little sweetness, it is pretty incredible and makes a huge difference. Three minutes later, there are a lot of flavor bits stuck to the pot, so I'm deglazing with a half cup of red wine. You can add a little extra depth of flavor and some richness, but if you are alcohol-free or you just don't buy wine, totally skip it. It's optional and lots of folks have made this recipe without the wine and still love it. It should take two to three minutes for this mixture to get nice and jammy. It's ready when you can no longer smell the booze. We haven't even added the lentils yet and you can see just how concentrated this flavor base has become. Drain and rinse the lentils and then add them alongside the walnuts. You wanna get this at a rapid simmer. The reason we soaked the lentils is that we needed to slightly pre-cook them. When lentils are cooked in an acid heavy environment, i.e. with tomatoes, they won't break down as quickly, so we needed to do some of that work up front. You wanna simmer this for 20 minutes, and then you can add in your canned crushed tomatoes. Simmer for another 15 to 20 minutes so all the flavors can develop and it can get nice and thick. When you're using simple ingredients, cooking them for a bit longer than you think can really make the difference between an okay dish and a great dish. Meanwhile, we'll cook our pasta, and a long wide pasta works great. Tagliatelle, pappardelle, fettuccine, these are all good options, or a pasta with ridges like rigatoni. If you choose something thin without any grip like spaghetti, the bolognese sauce will fall to the bottom of the bowl, so it's not great. Generously salt a pot of boiling water, add in your pasta, and cook it only until it's al dente, because we're gonna finish cooking it in the bolognese sauce. After 20 minutes, the bolognese looks fantastic, the lentils are al dente, not mushy, and the sauce is super thick and meaty. The finishing touch here is some good quality aged balsamic vinegar. This adds another layer of complexity and the sweet acidity enhances the meatiness of the walnuts. If you want a super saucy pasta like this, use 12 ounces or 350 grams of pasta. Otherwise, you can use up to 16 ounces or 450 grams. 
And if you have fresh basil or flat leaf parsley, they make for a lovely fresh finishing touch. Even though I've been making this recipe for four years at this point, every time I make it, I am so surprised by how complex the flavors can be, even though the ingredients are so simple. It's meaty, it's hearty, it's tomatoey, it's rich, and I can see why you guys like this recipe so much. For our next meal, we're making lentil tacos with avocado crema. We're not just serving plain lentils in a tortilla though. We're gonna be making a super delicious lentil taco meat. I first came up with this taco meat recipe for my vegan Crunchwrap Supreme, and they were such a big hit with y'all that I thought it would be fun to use them as a meat-free Taco Tuesday option. As with many of today's recipes, our first step is to cook the lentils. Green or brown lentils both work, and the key is to slightly undercook them since they're gonna get cooked again a little later when they're combined with a few other ingredients. While the lentils are simmering, we're gonna toast a quarter cup of walnuts. We'll also use this time to prep our mushrooms and shallots. For the mushrooms, remove the stem and give them a clean with a paper towel. Even though this is all going in the food processor later, we're gonna do a rough chop so things break down evenly and we don't get any large chunks. The lentils are mostly cooked and they still have a bite to them, so now it's time to blend them in the food processor. We're not trying to make a lentil puree here, it's more of a partial blend. If you see a few lentils still fully intact, don't worry about it. It should look something like this. Transfer the lentils to a large bowl, and now it's time to blend up a few more ingredients. First, the walnuts. We're looking for a pretty fine crumb here, but don't leave the motor on for too long or else this will turn into nut butter. Delicious, but not what we're going for. Add the mushrooms and shallots and blend until everything is in fine pieces like this. You're gonna add this walnut mushroom mixture to the bowl with the lentils, and now we have our base ingredients, but we need to add some flavor. First, some flaxseed meal. This is actually more for binding than for flavor. Three tablespoons of nutritional yeast, a teaspoon each of smoked paprika and kosher salt, crack in some black pepper, and add two tablespoons of taco seasoning, or three if you like. These last two ingredients are optional if you wanna make the lentil taco meat taste super meaty. One is porcini mushroom powder. This is gonna add a really great savory oomph. And two is a vegan beef broth seasoning powder or a bouillon cube, which is gonna make it taste like ground beef. But if you don't care whether this tastes like meat or not, go ahead and skip those. Now you're gonna mix everything together with your hands. The mixture should end up slightly sticky, just enough to shape it into a mass like this, but not so sticky that it sticks to your hands. If you're like me, you may find this process oddly satisfying. Now it's just time to cook this up. Heat up some oil in a large frying pan over medium to medium high heat. And to avoid overcrowding the pan, I'm cooking this in three batches. Use a flat-ended spatula to break it up into smaller pieces, and you wanna fry this faux meat until it's slightly crisp and browned, about five minutes. Transfer this to a plate and you're gonna repeat this process with the remaining taco meat and more oil as needed. Now this lentil taco meat is so delicious that you could serve it really plainly with vegan sour cream and store-bought salsa on a tortilla, but we are gonna take our tacos up a couple notches today. First, our cabbage slaw. You're gonna grab the most enormous cabbage that you can find. Just kidding, you really don't need this much. Slice it as thinly as you can with a sharp chef's knife or use a box grater. Massage the cabbage with a bit of lime juice and some salt for 30 to 60 seconds. This helps soften it and makes it easier to chew. I like to add some sliced green chilies here, but if you can't do spicy, feel free to omit. A drizzle of agave nectar helps balance everything out, and now just give it a taste and add more lime or salt if needed. It's time for my avocado crema, which is the spread for our tacos. It's quite simple because everything just goes in the food processor. Two small or one and a half medium avocados, Squeeze in three tablespoons of lime juice, two garlic cloves, a big handful of cilantro, four tablespoons of a creamy tangy vegan yogurt or sour cream, salt and pepper to season, and a bit of cumin. Blend this until it's smooth and creamy and then just add more lime juice or salt to your taste. I am working with some very cute and tiny flour tortillas today, but you could also use corn tortillas if you're gluten-free. Whatever you do, make sure to warm them up first because cold store-bought tortillas are garbage. Get a nice dollop of crema on your tortilla and spread it around. That's gonna help our lentil mixture adhere to the tacos. Now add your cabbage slaw, a little bit of cilantro on top for freshness, and this looks so good. You can find all of today's lentil recipes linked in the description box below, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.